rank, rank yourself? Bro, I'm underrated. You kidding me? I won, I won two world titles with busted hands, no promotion. <laughs> kidding? Constantly having to float the B side on every card, even though I shouldn't have been because I was super marketable. I'm underrated. I'm underrated. And I, and I want to know what you guys think, but I'm underrated for sure. And these guys, you feel like this is a good list? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's gonna be. We got we got a lot of opinions. Everybody's gonna have a lot of opinions. I want to know what you guys think at home. So like, like, comment, subscribe. But um, I don't know. I, I, that's the that's my list, and I, I gotta stick to it. You know, I, I I have my reasons for every every. I explain most of my picks. Most of my picks, I explain why I picked them that way. What's up, Ness? What's up? Well, I want an explanation, man. I want an what? explanation. I'm sitting. Oh, we got our first disagreement already. Look at this. <laughs> All right. All no, right. Because I'm sitting in the green room and I'm watching. And first off, I uh, just want to shout out Jimmy for a, a marvelous idea. The way that you know he put together this kind of like a show. Show. It's like a, a game show type of thing where you're just putting everyone in a specific category. And I had no problem. I'm be honest. Pretty much, can we get? Can you pull it up just so I can see everyone again? Pretty much, I was in agreements oh. with everything, other than your Kawasaki pick. I don't. I, anyway, and look, Kawasaki is always a controversial one, you know. And and and, I, and I'm a Kawasaki fan, but you know, I just I say it almost as a, as a disappointed fan. Like I wanted to see him in bigger matchups. I just I just wanted because I liked him. I, I wanted. I, I I still like him. I I just wanted to see him in bigger, more fun matchups. I I just felt like he constantly had these matchups where he was going to sell because he was so popular in Wales, but really the rest of the world didn't care. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like He made so many defenses in fights won, that nobody cared. But he won the two fights that Those, did matter. Oh, 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 he, which is why he gets credit. He's a Hall of Famer. But you got, him in the, you got him in the overrated. Because that means that people... He thought listened. he was better than what he I, really I, was. Well, because you'll never because of the lack of matchups, you can never put your stamp. And a guy that good is supposed to be able to put his stamp on it. You know, he's supposed by having had the matchups. You know, like, dude, bro, dude, Paulie, Taco, there was a time. Pudwell, there was a time Taco, you were gonna get the Floyd fight. If you would have beat Floyd, I can't call you a fucking all time great. I fought everybody though. But, I fought everybody. But that's your biggest fought, win. Your matter. biggest but win. But it doesn't matter. But you, you gotta belong. fight everybody. You gotta fight a lot of guys. And Muhammad Ali's an all time great so, because he fought everybody. There's not some. There's not one guy you can find in Muhammad Ali didn't fight. So if I got six losses, but I beat Floyd. I, I'm you, not you, an all-time great. Depends how you competed in the six losses. It depends how you competed in the six losses. Because uh, right, those, right. those six losses, if they were against all-time great fighters, it depends how you competed. If you got blown out in all six fights and you beat one of them, you're still kind of iffy. You know what I mean? Then, like Then you, he's got Ward in the all-time great. And Ward did the same shit Kawasaki did. No, he, he didn't. Was, no way. Ward won the Super Six. A, Ward won the Super Six. He beat up. He beat everybody. Ward won the Super but, Six. But none he of those guys all. were established. They were all up-and-coming Bro, contenders. he went in. No, you can't look at it uh, hindsight being 2020. That's why I said you got Give Kazakh credit for the Lacey one. You can't go. Well, I remember Ward's first fight with Michael Kessler. Nobody, nobody was talking about Andre Ward when his first fight with Michael Kessler was to start a tournament for him. He started opening the tournament against Michael Kessler. And I remember having a conversation with my manager in the gym saying, Yo, that's a big fight tonight. And he's like, Yo, I'm watching Michael Kessler tonight. And I'm like, Yo, be careful. Don't sleep on Ward. I was in the amateurs with him. He could fight. He goes, he goes, bro, I'm watching Michael Kessler tonight. And yo, Ward, who, who, Ward, are, you, who Ward, are you talking with? My manager. He didn't know shit about boxing. What? Every fucking body picked Ward in that tournament. Can, tell me. Ward well, nobody, Ward, nobody knew Andre in that tournament except the people that knew him. Americans, we knew but him. But even he then, was the what, favorite he, to well, win. No way. Not, not going into the tournament. Who did he fight going into the tournament? I knew Andre was the goods because I was in the amateurs with him. But I was convincing everybody. He was the everybody. last Olympic gold medalist Doesn't for matter. the male. You had, you, had, you had Frock in there. You had the Kessler in there. You had, so high. You had so so many guys. You had Arthur Abraham in there. You had Jermaine Taylor in there. You're right. No, no. There no, were some big names. No, like that, it was just you couldn't pick a guy who was untested as a pro to win the whole thing. You know what I mean? Like that, nobody was gonna pick him. Nobody, no, no way Ward was the favorite going in. As okay. a matter of fact, Ward was probably the least rated going in. But I knew Andre since least. I was in the amateurs. Since I was in the amateurs, because he hadn't done a lot of. I the would pro say yet. Jermaine Taylor was the least. He was on the later half of his career. To tell you the truth, when the, when the tournament started, you know why I rated the least pro. Arthur Abraham because he was okay. just he was just not fighting he was another one who just wasn't fighting anybody in Germany the fighting yeah. guys nobody cared about he in had Germany that power, though. he had that power though but anybody had that power and it's gonna land against guys when when that guy's don't know how to fight you know what I mean Arthur Abraham could punch but, but you're gonna hit the guys that can't fight what are Ward's two biggest wins because again you have him as Frock in the fi Frock in the final in the, in, the, in, the, in the, that's a big win bro okay uh, Frock, I, the fact that Cal the fact that Calzaghe didn't fight Frock is a big big non-title fight doesn't matter he Frock didn't have the doesn't belt doesn't matter he was in the finals all the right final, and, all right and so you the, beat a bunch the, of guys and, and Frock and Frock, got him, and Frock got himself to the finals Kovalev's a big win uh, that's um, it uh, no uh, Chad Dawson's a big a nice win yeah, yeah you know even though there's an asterisk next to that he made Chad come down for that. 
yeah, okay, whatever. But you know what? It's, and it's, after it's, that it's fight, Chad wasn't even the same because yeah, he had to you're come right, down. You're right, but it's still a good win. Um, in the overall scheme of things, though, he beat guys. He fought them in their primes. Kessler was still a prime Kessler. You know what I mean? Like Frock was still a prime Frock. You know what I mean? Like there was he beat guys uh, at, at a prime time of their careers. He beat on Arthur Abraham when he was still dangerous. I granted, I think Arthur Abraham's over Abraham's overrated, but what still did him dirty? You know what I mean? Like, and, and he beat them at a time where they were considered dangerous. You know. Calzaghi's wins. Don't think Calzaghi's wins. And again, I'm, I don't want people to think I'm not. I'm, I'm a big fan of Calzaghi. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm saying this more as a frustrated fan because I wanted to see him against guys in their prime. Aside from the Lacey fight, which you, which I think is actually an underrated win now because mm -hmm. Lacey didn't go accomplish much after that. But at the time, you have to call it like it, like you were saying it at the time of the fight. That's why I always tell no, people there was a lot of hype he, behind Lacey. He, and he, yeah, because you can't go with the hindsight being 2020. And there was a lot of hype behind Lacey, and, and Calzaghi was a big underdog, and he and he washed them. So so that's a big that's a big that's an underrated win for Calzaghi. But for the most part, when he was fighting guys, they were not considered that dangerous. Kessler was Kessler went to Wales. He did every, he Kessler had to give everything to Calzaghi for to, for that for that fight to happen. He had to go to Wales, he had to do it his way, and he had to fight in front of 40,000 Welsh guys against them and all this other stuff. I can't count that against Calzaghi because all the money's being made there and everybody's going there, but nonetheless, you also know nobody is going to let you fight Tucker Pudwell anywhere else but Wales. Nobody else is going to let you fight Mario Vey twice anywhere else but Wales. You know you have a built-in fan base. You can go fight, you, you know, the waiter or, or the taxi cab driver because you you know you got a built-in fan base. I, I That's one thing that but is frustrating. Still, frustrating because he's a really good fighter. He's an excellent fighter. But he still beat the names that mattered. Were they dangerous when he fought them? What I mean, mean, you you just said it. He 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 obviously well, beat Mikel Kessler before Ward did it, and you got yeah. Ward as an all time great. But Ward again for a got, lot of I guys. I got him right there, Ward, guys. No, you don't. You don't because he fought Ward. Again. He beat Ward, a prime Kessler. Ward fought these guys. He beat a prime Kessler in Wales. But when he came to the U.S., what did he do? He fought all over the Bro, hill Roy Jones. Anthony Joshua gets hometown fights. You can't discredit someone because they're a draw. Like, you're a draw, you're a draw. Uh, Tank gets to pick his, his location. He's no, a no, draw. No, 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 no. I know. I know. But the Tank, we, no time, but the tank is also <laughs> He's another name. Tyson, Tyson, <laughs> another, tank, tank is another one who's fighting guys that we never heard of until he fights them. So That's true. Let's see. I can't, I, I can't, I don't, I, I don't defend that no matter who does it. I'm sorry. I don't defend that again no matter who does it. You know, people knock Floyd. But we knew, we knew every single one of Floyd's opponents. And from when he was young, we knew who, we knew exactly who they were because they were that they were that good already when he was fighting them. Doesn't matter if you wanted to see him fight somebody else. When Floyd Mayweather fought, you knew who the guy he was fighting was. Whether you wanted to see him fight somebody else, okay, but you, at least you knew. There were guys, Calzaghi, you look at Calzaghi's record at the time he fought these guys. I was wondering constantly, who the hell is this guy yeah, that's but, fighting? But he's, he? from, he's from Wales. We're not supposed to know everyone on his record. Bro, they got Tiger Pudwell from North Dakota because Tiger Pudwell couldn't get fights in the U.S. They brought his ass over there to fight. So you, he's bringing them Commissions are different everywhere. You know they, how it is. In the U.K., they got they so let guys Pudwell. with 100 losses but, fight. So but that's the, what fact, the fact that Tiger Pudwell couldn't get a title shot in his own country, but he got one in Wales. That you're gonna. I got him with that one. I got him with that one. How are you, you gonna can, get me? Bro, you, you can't make a title Ward. defense. You got Ward as an all-time great, right? Doesn't matter. And then you got then you got Behop as an all-time great. Is, yes. And this because man they fought their beat their, res, their resume and beat Ward's one of Ward's best wins before him. Like, the, the, bro, it doesn't matter because you have to fight the guys at the time you fought the, them. It doesn't matter. Be a threshold. Bro. There's got to be a threshold for no. You, you know, it's you, the you, fans. It's, you it's guys the in the way, comment section. The way, who's right bro, in the, the comment Brits, section? The Brits are gonna, the Brits are gonna kill me. You kidding me? Like they're gonna, they, you're gonna, you're gonna win the debate so. on, on the on No, because you he can't. went on a three three American fight streak, right? Like he just what did he fight? What did he fight? It, it, it was Lacey Hopkins and then Lacey, uh, well, Lacey was in Wales, buddy. Uh, but no, no, I mean, I mean, three American fight, like three, yeah, 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 American but, fighters, and then he just retired. Like, no, no, Lacey was way before that. Lacey nobody was doesn't 06. do what that. Do you do? He fought Lacey in 06. He was oh, that was way God. before he started coming over here. Lacey uh, fought Lacey way a long time ago. But still, that's a big win. That that, that to me and he was is undefeated. actually his best win because. Because at the time nobody gave him a shot, you know, and that, so that to me Can is you the best think way. Of even, even, guy? even if Lacey after that didn't even go on to accomplish it, so people that look at this in like ten years when they don't know who anybody is will look at it and say, "Who the hell was Lacey?" Mm -hmm. But that's the that's the thing that gets frustrating when you go into different generations. Some wins get lost because you gotta you can't call that the way it is. You gotta call it the way you were talking about it before the fight. Yes, and before the fight nobody was picking Calzaghi, so that's a big big win. But 
But, I, you, but also you, before the fight, when he fought Roy Jones, nobody was picking Roy Jones either. Everybody, Roy Jones was there, was getting beat by everybody at that by that point. So you can't count the Roy Jones win as a, as a, as, a, as a legitimate, you know, Roy Jones win. You know what I mean? So for, for I'm taking last, his side for the Lacey side, but I'm not taking his side for the for the Roy Jones side. Uh, who would you call the the new Jeff Lacey from the last I don't know ten years um, the past? I don't know. Sorry, I gotta. Okay, I'm blowing my nose over here. Um, like, I and what I mean by that is obviously someone with all the hype, where people thought was this guy, and then he just doesn't pan out. I mean, these guys. I don't know. I I feel like. You think they? I gotta predict the bust. The, uh, you, you want me to predict? I the don't bust? want you to pick a, predict the bust. Just do you know another Lacey that happened? That happened? Uh, I mean, listen, Lacey won world title, won a world title. So you can't say he's like, anybody who got to get wins a world championship isn't a complete bust. But I don't know, man. I, I mean, I, I think of this generation where guys were supposed to last longer than they did, and they didn't. I don't know, man. I think of Lacey. You know what comes to my mind too? Ed Hobson, the guy that Tracy Patterson beat for the title. Well, now we're going back into their 90s. You know what I mean? Ed Hobson didn't last at all. And he, he was considered uh, pretty good when he won the title. And he, Patterson knocked him out, and that was the end of him. Uh, but I don't know, man. You know, I, no other popular bus. Because, you know, the, the Brits, they really rubbed that one in our face that Lacey what? lost, obviously. But I mean. Call him a high job, all that good stuff. I mean, listen, uh, you can't if you, you you can't call Lacey a hype job and then also defend Calzaghi. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, I, for me, no, not I'm, to me. Obviously, that's yeah. why I came in defending yeah. Calzaghi. I'm yeah. looking at the no, show. No, that's what I'm saying. I, but I'm, but, but, I, I'm, like, but I, I'm defending that win. That's a that's that, to me. That's Calzaghi's best yeah. win. I don't care where Lacey wound up after. At the time he was of of, of the fight, everybody was picking Lacey. I, I I judge it by the way people were talking at the time of the fight. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna judge it the way you're saying. That's like the same thing. Actually, you know why? Where I get a lot, of, I get a lot of that with my Sanchenko win. Like nobody talks about it now. Like uh, my best. Win and order. yo, bro, you none of you were picking me to beat Sanchenko at the time I bought. It's true, I, I, I was the biggest underdog of my career out of all the. Did wins. you bet on yourself? No, nah, Sanchenko, I didn't bet on myself. Mm. I got it. There wasn't, there wasn't a lot of. A lot of there wasn't. There wasn't a lot of I'm action. Sure. There wasn't a lot of places. You I'm be, sure Jimmy could go put the was, bet for there me. There wasn't a lot of places to get action on that fight. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of a lot of. Uh, and back then, there wasn't a lot of internet yeah. websites. A lot of, yeah, a lot of betting sites would, didn't even have it. You mm -hmm. know, even if they were, you know, uh, no, I bet myself on a bunch of that win for me. Cemented your career. It made you a two-time champion, you know, and you 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 did everything that you want from a fighter. You went to another country to win that title. Yeah. You already were going into that fight with the stigma of no power, mm -hmm. and you were able to win a second world title. Like with the TKO too. Every time I talk about that, I, I I I make sure to say that because it's like you know people reference you as a person that didn't have power, but you are a two-time champion. Well, you know what? One I time, don't, I don't, I don't, maybe I don't a, get, a crazy fan could call it lucky, I, but not twice. But, but you know what it is, man? I, I don't really get caught up in the whole power thing. I get caught up more in um, just the uh, accomplishments as a whole. You know, I, like if I couldn't fight, I could not have gone through the resume I went through and still survived to making mm -hmm. enough money and, and, be, and remaining relevant. You know what I mean? Because... I fought a, I fought every almost everybody, you know what I mean. So I had to be able to fight in order to survive that resume, you know, and and so I don't really get caught up in the in the whole punching power thing and and, and you know and all that other stuff because it's like and sometimes I see like people saying, oh, that's I was a weak world champion. I mean, with my resume to get through to get through an entire career with my resume, I mean, from 06 to fifteen. I fought almost exclusively top guys, you know what I mean. I, at the time, I fought them, you know, almost exclusively, and for a guy with with no power, hand issues, um, the pr lack of promotional push to get a side uh, de treatment. decision treatment, which is you know not having to go to people's hometowns or home countries, you know, um, you know. By the time I fought Sinchenko, I was pretty, I was pretty sturdy mentally and physically, you know. Like, I, I, not that I expected to not get robbed because I, I thought I was going to go there and get robbed, but I, I was sturdy mentally and physically in a way where I knew. I was gonna go there and do my job. Then whatever happened, happened. But I wasn't. I wasn't. I, w I was no longer like bothered by the fact that you know this could happen. I just I had no choice. So I'm like, you know Did what? Did you I'm do anything gonna... different in that camp? No, but I'll tell you, I didn't do anything different. But it's the only camp of my career where everything went perfect. I was like, I was waiting for something because there's always a camp where 
and we all no, nobody's camp is ever perfect. Nobody, I'm telling you, like every every single fighter has little hiccups during camp, and you just adjust them and whatever you get to fight. That is the only camp of my career where it was literally perfect. And I was thinking a couple of times, like, yo. And it was crazy because were you the, with Eric Eric Brown at the Eric time? Brown, yeah. But it's crazy because the, the the camp went in three different phases. We started in LA where I was training at the time, but we couldn't use Wild Card Gym because Sinchenko was using Wild Card Gym because he was with Freddie at the time. Mm -hmm. So we went to uh, LA first and trained, uh, but we trained in Glendale at uh, um, at, at, uh, at another gym, at Edwin at, at Edwin's gym. Edwin uh, at, Edwin used to train Ronda Rousey, so we trained at that gym. Then we moved over to New York for a few weeks. Um, and then we moved to Milan, Italy to get used to the European time zone. So we had three different phases. And I thought changing geography constantly was going to give me some hiccups at a certain point. Maybe when I first changed over. And, bro, I don't know, bro. It's a, bro, it that was, was a perfect, lot of changing it was, and, for that fight. And, How'd you... and, bro, and I'll tell you what. I got sick when I was in Milan. I got sick and I sparred one day. I was kind of sick. And I was supposed to do 12 rounds. And I only did eight rounds. I was sick, but I was so sharp those eight rounds. I remember just being on the, I remember laying on the canvas. Like I was done. I was like, took my head gear off, I was done. I'm laying on the canvas, sweating. I was just, I was, I was, I had sick feelings. Today they will call it COVID, but you know, at that time, it was just, <laughs> at that time, at that time, I, I, I had like a flu or a fever. Yeah. You know what I mean? I sparred, but, and I, I remember laying down and I said, I couldn't finish the 12 rounds, but I laying down in the ring by myself. Everybody's going on to do their work and, and laying down and saying, yo, man. I'm super sharp. Like, don't even, don't even focus on the fact that I didn't finish the rounds today. I'm so sharp because even the rounds I did now, I'm sick and I was like so sharp. Like, I'm just, I just, I just, I, this, and I told myself, yo, this has been like, it's crazy how nothing's going wrong in this camp. You know what I mean? Like this, and I just took it all the way to, I just took it all the way to Ukraine. I got, a, I got and, another. And that question. was the fourth phase, the Ukraine. So we, we, that was yet another city we had to go to. I got another question because I know that was very public, that situation. You know, you ended up having to go to purse bid. Mm -hmm. It was something like a quarter million. You were upset that Golden Boy didn't bid. So how did you, did you finance the, the camp yourself? Did they yeah, yeah. eventually no, give they didn't. You? No, what they did uh, at the time, Richard Schaefer was with Golden Boy, and he told me they wouldn't take their cut because they, they, I didn't want to take the fight. They, mm -hmm. they, they lost the purse bid, and I had to go there. Um, and I was like, bro, I'm sick and tired of nobody backing me. You know what I mean? But I kind of knew when I signed with Golden Boy that it was going to be a little bit harder for them to 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 get me. They didn't have me like like the Bella had me, where you have me in my prime, and you as long as you get dates, you're going to get me the mm -hmm. A side. Golden Boy got me as damaged goods, so for them to get me as an A side, turn me into an A side is harder because you got to deal with the networks feeling like I'm damaged goods. Mm -hmm. So I kind of knew that they couldn't bid high because they uh, the networks didn't want me anymore. And um, uh, I'll give you a story. Um, in 2010, when I uh, when I was uh, fighting Amir Khan, I had been used constantly by HBO as, a, as an opponent. You know, uh, you know, uh, most of the time I was a B side mm -hmm, when I was mm -hmm. put on HBO, and sometimes I I pulled the upset, and sometimes I didn't. But I I, I fought mo mostly exclusively on HBO at the time. And when I was the Khan fight, um, I'm not gonna give away my source, but a person in boxing was rel well known in boxing was sitting next to Kerry Davis, and Kerry Davis got up as they were leaving the arena and said. And he was never a big fan of mine to begin with, uh, nor was I of his. Uh, but he goes, uh, Paulie Malignaggi will never fight on HBO again. And it was like mm. a joke. Like He was like, people were laughing. And uh, this person who's well-known in boxing goes and tells my manager. And I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, at that time, that was the least of my problems. I didn't even know where I was going from that point, mm -hmm. you know, because it was a bad loss. And so I knew this already when I went to Golden Boy that I, they might have trouble getting me dates on TV. So what they did, and to their credit... They had a lot of pay-per-views at that time. At that time, Golden Boy had a lot more dates. And they would put me on the televised portion of the pay-per-views. And so you know how it is. The stigma is all in, your, in what you mm -hmm. see. If I was winning off TV, people would still have seen that stigma of the con loss. It's a bad loss. Mm -hmm. But now you put me on TV against Jose Cotto, against Orlando Laura, on these pay-per-views. I'm opening up the pay-per-views. But you're seeing me. You're seeing mm -hmm. I'm active. You're seeing me sharp. So you're kind of changing the perception of me. So God, I, I, And I, I, I had never even had that. You know what I mean? I had never even had that as a uh, with the promoter I was with previously. You know, mm -hmm. I was just literally start every time with starting from scratch. You know, so and and just constantly flipping B sides constantly. So and when I had a build, I had a build for no money and had a build like off TV or like on low level TV. So now I'm again, I'm getting to open up pay per views for decent money. Mm -hmm. And people are also seeing me because it's a good platform. You know, these pay-per-views were uh, Morales versus Maidana, which is a good fight. Yep. And then uh, Dawson versus Hopkins, the first one. And uh, the one I, when he slammed him, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. there, yeah, no, that was at LA, oh, State okay. Staples Center, yeah. So, um, we did that, and now I know the purse bit is coming, I'm the number one contender in the WBA, and all of a sudden, 
I got to, um, I realized they're not going to win this purse bid. As I know in the back of my mind what had been said two years prior when I lost to Khan, that these mm -hmm. guys don't want me. Now, I got the number one contender status uh, in the WBA. I'll tell you the story. Um, I was in Italy in the summer. I spent some time in Italy. Um, I remember that. I was yeah. following you. I think you went... Yeah. Um, yeah, your no, friend Le yeah, Greco. Yeah, I went together. that summer, and then and then later after the after the Laura fight, I went back to Italy. There was a point in my life where I was going to consider moving. Italy. Had not had it not been for the pandemic, I'd probably be living in Italy already. Wow. You know what I mean? Like I was almost I was I was just waiting for my Showtime contract, and then I was strongly considering just taking a full time contract with Sky Sports and living in Sicily and working in London. You know, because uh, th that flight is closer than New York to Vegas. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, but anyway, uh, so at the time I was I was in Italy after the Laura fight in the winter. Uh, in November, October, November. I don't remember now. No, October was the Laura fight. So November, I get a call from Robert Diaz at Golden Boy. He's like, "Yo, what are you doing?" I'm like, "Nothing, bro." It was nighttime. I'm like, "No, no, I'm, I'm in Sicily right now." He's like, "You got to get to Ukraine right now." I'm like, "What do you mean? I got to get to Ukraine right now?" The promoter had uh, the, of Fachenchenko had funded WBA conventions. He was hosting it, so he was in good with the BA. And he's like, the, you're the number one four contender, but the three guys in front of you aren't available. If you come here right now for the ranking meetings tomorrow, we might be able to put you in the, the mandatory because the three guys in front of you are not available. I'm like, what do you mean they're not available? He goes, Brad Solomon is ranked number one, and he's having issues with his contract with his promoters, and he's not going to fight. The number two and three guys have, both have a fight scheduled. They, 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 they're, not, they're not available. He goes, you're next. He goes, you come here. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna put you into number one. I'm like, oh, shit, man. I'm like, all right. You know, I, I, I'm finding flights. I'm, I'm go I, I got a flight from Sicily, Catania, Sicily to Milan, Milan to Kiev, Kiev to Donetsk. At the, time, at the time, Donetsk had an airport. Now they blew it up. But at the time, Donetsk had an airport. Uh, and Donetsk was where Sinchenko was from. So I, uh, I get there. We go through the whole thing. And sure enough, by the end of the week, I'm the number one contender. I'm the mandatory contender because uh, I was next in line. Mm -hmm. And we, now we solidified it. Like, I yes, I'm here. I'm available to fight this fight. I'm good. But, of course, I know there's a purse bid. And that's the important thing for people watching. Presence. You have to go to these conventions. Yeah. If you think you're going to get favor, you're going to be called yeah. the mandatory and right. you didn't even show up. Yep. Yeah. They're yeah. not paying yeah. any Present, money. To you. Presents get you presents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yeah, no. Presents get you presents. So, so I... Uh, but I, I leave Donetsk, I go back to Italy, and then I go back, uh, you know, a couple weeks later, I go back to the U.S. But I'm thinking to myself, how are we going to deal with this purse bid? Because I don't know if, you yeah. know, they, I wonder if uh, if they're going to uh, sign me. You know what I mean? They're going to let me. Do I remember I called uh, Sam Watson. I, I tried to sign with Al Heyman a bunch of times. Finally, at the end, he signed me after the Brona fight. But I, I tried to call Al Heyman a bunch of times during my, my the prime of my career. I always really? Got, I always got turned down, yeah, through Sam Watson. Uh, I tried to talk to him after I was, when I became the IBF champion. <laughs> no go. And then I tried to but, talk to him. But what? What happens? The conversation? Like, they're like, Sam will get back to Sam, you? Yeah, Sam gets back to you. He always be like, I love you, but it's not the time. Or, or, or you know, you know, Sam, Sam, you know, Sam always. Smooth. It's crazy too because it's like that. Like he's very exclusive as mm -hmm. to who he yeah. he deals mm -hmm. with. Yeah. I look at a yeah. fight. I'm like, why haven't you yeah. talked to Al? Yeah. So so I, at the time, now I'm the normal contender. So I call Sam again. I call, it's like this is like the second or third time, you know, in my career that I've done this. I call him. And I'm like, yo, and I because I kind of know we might not win this person. And I'm like, yo, Sam, you know, I need you to do me a favor. You know, uh, I don't want no money from you. So I, I just I just want to sign with you. So because I knew signing with them. Al could get me the HBO date, mm -hmm. and then the fight we can win the purse bid. So I was like, I, I was like, I promise you, if you sign me for nothing, you'll have another world champion on your table. I promise you, I can beat this guy. I promise you. And he's like, all right, let me let me get back to you. You know, Sam always has to get back to you. Get back to me a couple of times, and then he was like, Yo, listen, uh, I love you, but you know, it, it's just not a time. It is, it is, but but he loves you. He said, like, Keep doing your thing, and I'm like, <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> you know, so so I we go to the purse bid like a week later. Uh, I don't go, but uh, Roberto Diaz goes. And, and I sent Roberto Diaz a text message the night before. I'm like, please win this purse bid. I promise I'll win this fight. Please win this purse bid. And sure enough, we lost the purse bid. They bet, they bid like a million dollars, bro. They bid like over a million dollars, and they, they get three quarters of it, but they bid like over a million dollars. And we can only bid like 200000 because that's basically— I thought, you bid, I thought it was two fifty. Two fifty, maybe I don't know. Whatever it was, but we had to basically be a co-feature or uh, on a HBO call. Or, or, no, we had to be a co-feature on a, on a pay-per-view where you get to decide who goes on the undercard because mm -hmm. I couldn't even get on HBO date and HBO date. So and Showtime didn't want me either. So so that wasn't enough. So at first I turned it down. I'm like, no, I'm not going. I'm, I'm tired of going to people's hometowns. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of all this. I'm tired of people not believing in me. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of doing it this way. I'm not going. And finally, Richard Schaefer, at first he got mad, and then he was like, listen, we won't take our cut. That's all we can do for you. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we, what do you want us to do? You know, there's nothing else we, we can do. Our hands are tied. So I thought about it for a day, and I thought to myself, I can either go there and get robbed, 
or I can just stay in the same situation I'm in. Whereas I'm not gonna get dates. Maybe if I get robbed, if I fight so good, maybe I'll come home and they'll 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 give me a chance. Like you say, mm -hmm. oh, he was fighting good, or maybe they won't. But right, I said all, what I do know is right now, if I stay in the same position I'm in, nothing will change at yeah. all. You know. So I said, all right, screw it. I may take this fight. So I took the fight and uh, started camp, and that was the way the, with the, how the camp uh, man maneuvered itself. You know, and uh, we got there, and. You know, th whatever happened happened. You know, it was a, it was a, like I said, it was a perfect camp. I was waiting for something to go wrong during that camp. It just didn't go wrong. I, I got, I got super sharp, bro. I mean, you could just see the way I'm fighting that fight. I was, so I, I really feel that night I could have beat anybody in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Would you consider that your career defining moment? Um, it was a moment where I, I, it ex prolonged my career because, uh, because I, I thought like. I remember being inside the ring, and I was so angry. I had, and I, was, and I knew I was sharp, but I was so angry being in the ring, waiting for this guy to walk to the ring. I just remember telling myself, bro, they might rob me tonight, but they're gonna know Paulie Malignaggi knew how to fight. You know what I mean? They, they're gonna rob me, but they're gonna look back and say, yo, that, that mf -er knew how to fight, bro. That mf -er could fight, we all, they did him dirty. I, and I might walk away in the sunset tonight, but I'm gonna go walk away in the sunset with beating this guy's ass. I might get robbed, but I, that's what I'm gonna do. And I remember, I was just, Focusing, focusing. He's walking to the ring. And, and I remember looking at my best friend, Petey, Peter Cards, and he's looking at me. And, I, and I, we just kind of walk in. When he's, he's, the other guy's entrance music is on. He's walking to the ring, like, taking his time. And I'm like, yo, bro. Because I turned pro in Coney Island's Keyspan Park, which now is called MCU Park. It's outdoor stadium in the summer of 2001. So I look at my boy, and I'm like, bro, you believe that, bro? I was like, I was like we started in, in Brooklyn in a stadium, and I was, it was about to end. On the, on you know on this night in a, in a stadium all the way on the other side of the world like it's, it's, it's crazy you know mm -hmm. like uh, it, it, it it's kind of like eerie you know but like we're still in a stadium like all the way from Coney Island for here you know this is how, it, how it's gonna end and my boy gets teary eyed <laughs> he gets all emotional he's like I don't want to ten bro <laughs> 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 and and I, and I looked at him bro I don't know it just came, it just came out of me to say it it just came out of me to say it I was like it ain't gonna end tonight bro. It's not gonna end tonight. That's what's up. And then what a story. And then that was it. Then the, the fight happened the way it happened, you know. But so you wouldn't consider that your biggest win? I would consider it. That was an undefeated most, champion. The most, the most important win for me because wait, was that a vacant or was no, he the champ? No, he was. He had like six defenses. That's man. what I'm saying. Yeah. How, how could you mm -hmm. not? He was undefeated, and, and nobody wanted to go there, including me. I didn't want to go there either. I just had no choice. But nobody was going there. You it's know? funny. After him, he retired after he Kelberg, fought, right? He knocked out Hatton after that. He ruined my payday, bro. That no, was. But, but he fought. He, he lost to Kelberg after. Yeah. But what you? That, that, yeah, the story continues with Sinchenko, bro. Six months later, you know, Ricky Hatton's considering coming back. He's mm -hmm. training. And they're like, I guess Ricky saw me beat this guy. I'm like, well, I beat Paulie, and like, you know, I, he's got a title now. I can yeah. walk right into a title shot. And I was dying because me with Eric Brown and we were Buddy McGirt. It's like a one, it's like a night and day difference. I mean, it's a night and day difference, you know. And and me with most other trainers. Uh, except Buddy would have, was a night and day difference, actually. <laughs> I, I, and that's not a knock on Buddy. I think with punchers, Buddy's a good trainer. But damn, bro. What happened the two years with Buddy, I regress very badly. Very mm. badly. Only time in my career. Don't tell that to Pat. No. No, no. I mean, it's it's no, it, it, it's just styles, man. I really. It's just styles. It's not a knock on even that. It's just, I think stylistically, some people don't mesh well. You know, some mm -hmm. styles don't mesh well. Um, I, I, I can't say I regress with anybody else. I mean, I, there was actually things I learned from Buddy. I just had it throw out most of the stuff, you know, and I didn't get, I wasn't able to throw it out until I, I moved on to other trainers and then I was able to just keep what I wanted to from Buddy and throw out most of the stuff that wasn't going to fit with me, you know, mm -hmm. and there were things that I took, that I did take from Buddy, um, but nonetheless, uh, Hatton is coming back and I'm salivating because it's going to be a big payday mm -hmm. and I can't wait to show Hatton this version of me. You know what I mean? Like, I can't wait to show Hatton this version of me. And I'm like, okay. And he's going to have one comeback fight. They tell me, call me. Like, when are you going to have one? I remember. Come the comeback fight. And he's like, after he wins, he's going to fight you in Barclays Center. It's going to be huge because Barclays Center just opened. It's going to be huge. And you're going to be the world champion. And I was so psyched. I'm like, man, I won this world title at a perfect time. And I don't look good in the Kano fight. Although, I that Kano fight, man. I, I was I, there for that's that one. Another, I was in Brooklyn, right? That's another one where it's like. Yo, I know the punch stats. I don't know all this other stuff, but bro, if you look at me through seven, eight rounds, we were cool in the corner. We thought we were winning easily, bro. I, I know. I don't. I, I watched that fight, and bro, I mark up easily, bro. Through eight rounds, I don't have a mark on my face, bro. I, I, I just don't get it. Like, 
I get it. Like when you watch it on TV, it looks a little bit different. But bro, usually when I'm in a struggling fight, my corner's struggling, my 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 team, you know, we kind of get it. Like it's urgent. Bro, you can just look at that fight in the corner. We are just chilling. Like we just we we closed out badly, kind of closed the gap at the end. But bro, through, through, I'm literally through eight rounds. I thought I and my whole team yeah, thought I, we were I, up seven one. I thought that was yeah. it. The championship rounds. Yeah, but they, seemed I, like maybe you faded or yeah, he was I did. Just coming I, no, on. I did fade. I, I overtrained for that fight. I, I overtrained for that fight. I, I went into that fight a little bit overtrained, and I felt it too. But but I just felt he was too slow early on. Like I said, you can see my I, I'm a guy who marks up easily. The last four rounds, I get marked up. But in in retrospect, that's what I'm saying about you labeling yourself in the right category, underrated because. He knocked out. After that, Kano went on to knock out like two other big Linares. Names. Linares was one, yeah, but another gonna, one. We're going to go off into an offshoot about Kano one second because I want to go back to the story he was telling. But tell me tell you something about Kano, what's funny about Kano. Kano's fighting Linares. Linares is smaller man, no chin. Me and Peter Cards are looking for any site that's taking this bet, bro. <laughs> we were looking at Nobody was taking this bet, bro. So you they knew. Thought, everybody thought Linares was going to kill him. Yeah. And we were like, bro, we, we can't find anybody take this action right now. This is crazy. He's going to knock this guy out. Nobody gets it. And, yo, we couldn't find... Bro, the odds were, like, astronomical, bro. Yeah. We were dying to find some. We knew Kano was going to knock out Linares. Couldn't get the action, man. I was so pissed. I was so pissed. And then to watch him knock him out in one round, I was even more pissed. You know, because yeah. like that, 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 that guy could he could he could fight a little bit. He could he could punch though. No, I'm, one I'm of the pretty sure we, I I'm pretty sure if we Google him since your loss. He was very your, lazy. Your, he was very fight, he was very lazy. He, he got like two big names. Yeah, but he was very lazy. So he's up and he's hot and cold. Mm -hmm, because he, mm -hmm. he didn't make weight even for my fight. He's very, very lazy. So anyway, so going back, so I don't look good at even the Even the Linares fight was uh, above Linares' yeah. weight. Yeah, yeah. Linares, you know, they fought at 140. They mm -hmm. went up to 140. So so I, going back to the hand fight, you know, uh, I beat Kano and England, England, like, oh, he's going to fight Sinchenko. And then, he, and I'm like, why Sinchenko, bro? Why are you fighting Sinchenko? You really think because I beat him, you, like, bro, that wasn't the same me that fought you in 08. That's not even close, bro. Like, mm -hmm. the version of me that fought. Ricky Han is the so one. The, you're just thinking this. You didn't have a conversation with Ricky. No, no, no. I didn't talk to Ricky. I didn't talk to him. In my mind, but I'm talking to my team, and I'm like, bro, I'll tell you what. The 08 version of me that fought Ricky Hatton would have lost to the 2002 version of me that's a six-round fighter. Mm -hmm. That's how much I had regressed in, that, in 08. If you look at any of my fights in 08, I'm teetering little by little by little. And, and the, the culmination of the Ricky Hatton fight, I look like I don't even know what I'm doing. I, it's just, I have just had my whole energy and style drained out of me. And like I've been taught from scratch, like I don't know how to fight, but by into a, I'm being trying to, these guys attempting to turn me into a completely different kind of fighter, which I never was and I wasn't. But what and you was can he see the confusion. Uh, Buddy has a style where he wants you to stay low and move your head a lot. And I think staying low, and now my personal difference of opinion, at that time I didn't know how to kind of gauge it, you know? I just was just a student and I listened to my trainer. But now looking back as a 41-year-old man, um, you stay low when you're on the inside, you stay low when you're up against the ropes because you don't want to be a target. But at mid-ring, if you fight like me, if you fight like me, you stay up high because your feet are slower when you get when yourself too low. When you lower yourself, you slow your feet down. You can't mm -hmm. have fast feet and lower yourself, which is why you fight low on the inside because there's a lot can come in your way on the inside, and you stay low against the ropes because you don't have a lot of options. But at mid ring, you do not stay low. You stay high, and you and you change range. And when you fight like me, when you fight like me, I'm a range changer. A range changer has to stay up high and will get low when needs to. A guy who fights like Buddy, who, when you can punch. You stay low because you're always leveraging your shots. And you, Buddy can punch, and a lot of other guys that he had success with can punch. You can leverage your shots, because, but staying low is going to limit your mobility. So guys are going to get to you. But you know what? When you can punch, they don't really want to get to you. They want to be mm -hmm. careful. But with me, I'm not a big puncher. The guys want to get to me, and they want to be all over me. So I have to be the range changer. I have to be the... Now, looking back, again, as a 41-year-old man now... Buddy didn't understand my style. He had understood his style, and he was just teaching me his style on me, and it didn't mesh well with my style. And if I'm honest, Buddy didn't understand my style even as a fighter because he lost to range changers. Meldrick Taylor and Pernell Whitaker were range changers. I'm granted I'm not putting myself in the same level as Meldrick and Pernell, but they were range changer kind of fighters. And so he, he, could, he didn't understand that style when he fought it, and he didn't understand that style when, when he trained it. When, but didn't so, Pernell get pretty low? Wasn't that like one of his yeah, things? I, I get, when he was against the ropes, or was, you know, he remember him in the corner getting low yeah. and stuff. You got to stay low when you're on the ropes. You got to, you know, if you're going to use your legs, it's automatic. You can even put yourself in a boxing stance. Get yourself real low and try to, you know, try to be quick with your 
feet. You can't. You can't do it unless you're high. You, you, your feet are going to slow down. So it's a byproduct. By, and people are like, oh, you know, buddy slowed you down. He did he tell you to slow down. No, no, buddy doesn't tell you to slow you down. A byproduct of of the stance you get put into. It's like when you change a battery and change the batting stance. You know, mm-hmm. there's byproducts that happen because of that. One, a byproduct is my feet slow down. You know, and me, you need with a feet. slow feet. And not a big punch, everybody's getting to me. And Hatton just jumped all over me. You know what I mean? Like, at a certain point, I, I was just trying to bounce around, but staying low, bouncing around, because I don't know how to change range from where I was staying anymore, because we hadn't trained that way. Some people were like, why don't you just do what you used to do? Because it's based on timing. You haven't trained that way. You haven't trained that way in, in forever. It's based on timing. So so it was just, you know, it was, it was very frustrating. And um, I was dying to show Buddy the version of me i mean not the buddy uh was on a show hatton the, new the, ver- version, the of version of me you know that version of me that a lot of other guys saw you know that juan diaz saw that even miguel Cotto saw you know like that, that that version of me that was the one i wanted to show hatton i wanted Hatton to fight that version of me because i especially coming out of retirement i yeah. remember that there was buzz i wanted that. him to see that in a way unfortunately i was you know it, it, it didn't work that way you know what i mean but i i wanted that in a way I mean, that i really i i you know i it's people are gonna Say it the way they want to, but the version of me that fought Juan Diaz a year later, I think would have won the Ricky Hatton fight. I don't think Ricky was where he could have been either by a weight. I know he says, uh, when I look at what he said about that fight, he had a good camp, but then he had a bad camp for the Pacquiao fight. I don't think I had anything to do with it, man. I, I really think if the version of me that fought Juan Diaz in 09 shows up in 08 against Hatton, yeah, I beat Hatton. I felt, I felt like Juan was a more set in his style. He didn't punch as hard as Ricky, but he could throw in combination. Ricky couldn't even throw in combination. He was always jumping in. You know, so it was easier. easier he, 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 it was, so it was easier to, to get away from him. You know, it was easier to make a miss. You know, with Juan, he was throwing in combination. You got to get out of the way completely because this guy stays on balance and keeps throwing, keeps throwing and keeps firing. Juan wasn't a big puncher, but he stopped guys like Asselino Freitas, Julio Diaz, and, and so on and so forth. He was relentless. So, so you know, uh, I felt like that was a tougher fight. Fight, but I was also sharper. Damn, he retired so young too. Yeah. Well, he peaked young. When you peak young, that you was Ronnie's retire. fighter too. Yeah, yeah. When, when Ronnie you, wanted him to retire. Yeah. But too. when you peak young, you tend to end young. You know, Fernando Vargas, uh, Meldrick Taylor. You know, think about it. You know, you, you can only take so many shots in your career, right? Yeah. Unless you, well, we won't get into that. <laughs> but, 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 but you know, uh, going back to uh, uh, with the Sinchenko fight, yeah, it's uh, the Hatton fight. So he, I was, I wanted. I remember thinking, I wanted. Why isn't Hatton fighting Katsidis? I thought let myself like, yeah, why isn't I just fight Katsidis? There's a lightweight coming up. Hatton would beat him because he's too strong for him. Mm-hmm. Hatton was always a bully kind of fighter, but he, he wasn't very a good, bu- very good bully at welterweight. If you remember, he had trouble with Colazzo trying to bully Colazzo. So I wanted that rematch. So yeah, I wanted it too, but I want to see that too. But I, I looking at Sinchenko, who was the biggest welterweight I ever fought. Sinchenko was a monster welterweight. Colazzo like, had a good not, fight with Berto too. Yeah, Colazzo, Colazzo was very underrated. Colazzo, speaking of one of the most underrated, <laughs> Colazzo the most underrated. Yeah. Colazzo the most underrated um he, but man his career yeah well you again you got to sign with the right people man when you're you know. not with the right people that it's all and he got a lot of fights though he did but as a b-side same thing yep. same thing he didn't have people taking care of him the same thing he's mm-hmm. from he's Brooklyn, definitely yeah. from new york yeah, from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. colazzo i always tell people you know because people tend to talk about me more than louis colazzo i'll tell you what we came out of the amateurs together out of our generation me and colazzo and even yuri foreman uh, became uh, uh, world champions out of our generation. I think that's it. Out of the our uh, by generations, I talk about them in four year quadrennials, mm-hmm. you know, because every Olympic year guys turn pro, right? So out of our quadrennial, what what, what, what was your year? Two thousand Olympics, but I didn't turn pro in two thousand one. But I was in the two thousand quadrennial, you know. Mm-hmm. So out of our quadrennial, the New York fighters, um, uh, Zab was the one previous to us, but uh, me, Colazzo, and we reformed and became world champions. Uh, but I, I tell people Colazzo was the best one out of all of us. You know, you're just, just yeah. showing me that pick, right? Yeah, you guys? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, the yeah, Yuri was in that pick. Yeah, Yuri was in that uh, yeah. that old pick. I saw, but and and we all became world champions. But I think people talk about me the most. Uh, but Colazzo was the best one. Colazzo was the best one. But he just he signed with people that didn't really take care of him at all. You know what I mean? And he was a quiet guy. Like, I, I if I wasn't gonna get fights or I was gonna be flipping the B side constantly, I'm at least gonna be the annoying guy who who, who fits in somewhere. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Louis was kind of just to himself and chill, you know? And very religious. Very, yeah. So he, he became and, religious. Because well, Louis was a little bit wild when we were young, but he became religious and he kind of just calmed down and I tell you, underrated. You're right, because I remember Louis going to the club with his belt one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was in a couple of clubs with Louis uh, a couple of times, you know. But Lou, Lou was a, um, uh, Lou was a, a very good fighter. Louis was a very good fighter. He uh, very underrated, and he was the best one out of our generation for sure. I, I, I freely tell people that. But going back to the, um, the, uh, the Hatton fight, yeah. So I'm, 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 prime time was the network that had the Hatton fight with Sinchenko, right? 
and they want me to go there, and they, they tell me, basically, you're going to help us commentate the fight, and then and then what's going to happen is we're going to announce you versus Hatton in the post-fight press conference. You oh, know, wow. We're going to do it in Barclays Center in the spring. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh man, please don't get beat, dude. Like, I know he's not going to be able to bully this guy. I already know. Like, he's he's going to try to bully, but this guy's too big to bully. And I already know Hatton doesn't really have any other plans besides bullying opponents. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, like... It's in England. Maybe they'll rob Zinchenko. <laughs> or maybe, you know, maybe he'll, he'll squeak it out. I knew it wasn't going to be an easy fight. I knew it because Styles just make fights. And, you know, it, it just turns into it. And I remember seeing Zinchenko at the weigh-in, and he looked so focused. Like He was probably so pissed off that he just lost to me. He was so focused, bro. He looked a lot meaner than he did <laughs> when I fought him six months prior. He looked a lot meaner. You know when you're coming off that loss and nobody yeah. believes in you, you just you realize it's you against the world? Zinchenko had this look in his face, bro. I'm telling you, I'm like, oh, man, this guy, this guy showed up to fight, bro. Against me, he kind of just looked like he was going through the motions, man, and I was super focused. And I looked like that guy. Zinchenko looked like that guy against Hatton. And I'm like, oh, man. And I'm seeing that the way. I'm like, man, tomorrow, man, just, just don't mess this up for me. <laughs> and, and I remember the fight debilitating went to a rough, yeah. rough fight. And it's going crazy. And all of a sudden, he hits him with that body shot and like, end of round nine. I think end of round nine or 10. And Hatton goes down on all fours. And it's a 10 second tap. So I'm looking and I'm like, oh, couldn't he beat the count? Can he beat the count? And I remember like, this is a seven, eight, nine. And he's on all fours. And I'm like, I'm seeing the money drill down the toilet. Oh, you know, I'm like, man. oh man, you know? And I'm just sitting there. Now I'm standing up ringside. I was looking at it, you know, the, all the post fight hubbub is inside the ring and it's crazy. And um, Sanchenko looks at me and I leave, we meet eyes and he goes, <laughs> like, like right. I like, I basically, hey man. I'm it's sorry. Just yeah, like, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's just business. I got to do it, you know? So uh, Was the rematch ever offered to you? With Hatton? No, no. with, with Sanchenko. Uh, Sanchenko wanted a rematch. They wanted a rematch. Um, with this, you know, there were bigger fights. You know, we ended up fighting Broner. Yeah, you ended up we getting had, the Broner fight. We ended up fighting Broner. I, 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 and, speaking and, of not getting rematches. <laughs> yeah. So, would you consider the Broner fight a caveat, or you think it ended up being a bigger fight than the Hatton fight? Um, You know, like, I, I tend to see sometimes where people say, oh, Paulie lost the biggest fights of his career. Not really. I mean, I got robbed in some of the biggest fights of my career, you know? Uh, I thought you won the Broner fight. I thought I won the Broner fight, and I thought I won the Juan Diaz fight, you know? I thought uh, you definitely uh, won the Broner fight. I mean, look, it wasn't like it's clear, but no, I, no. I, I'm a, but here's the thing. I always like boxers. Like, I, I, I like no, theories. No, I tell you what, Ness, it's even more you than that. You were pumping it's that jab, it's, 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 it's it even more. It's, it's even more than that, though. It's even more than that. The whole stereotypical, you got to take the title from the champion. You got to fight the champion. You got to... Uh, 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 you know, the st he, he, hometown, um, everything. The whole the stereotypes were on my side, okay. For lack of a better one, the he, the white guy is, uh, you know, all that has the advantages too, right? That's mm -hmm. another one that they like to say. All the stereotypical advantages are on my side, all every single one, with the exception of the real advantages, which are that Broner is the up and coming star. Everybody wants to make him the star, and well, he's he, the house fighter. He's the house fighter with Heyman because. In reality, we were both technically house fighters. We both are with Golden Boy. But by the time I signed with Golden Boy, I didn't know there was a split going on. Mm -hmm. At the time I signed with Golden Boy, I thought I was signing with the Golden Boy that was Golden Boy when I fought Juan Diaz, where they were just getting all the dates and they controlled everything. So I was thought I was finally signing with them. In reality, by the time I got there, there was a Golden Boy A and Golden Boy B. The Golden Boy with Heyman and Golden Boy without Heyman. And if you were on Golden Boy without Heyman, you were you had these nuts. You know what I mean? So 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 basically. Going into the Broner fight, Broner fight as a challenger got paid more than me. I got good money, but but Broner got paid more than me as the challenger. And then he also uh, got the decision that you know, and 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 the worst part of all that, um, I guess they felt like they just had a bad style matchup with me. They didn't want to give me a rematch. They wanted to continue the the climb, and they just figured like that must have just been a bad style matchup. Let's not do the rematch. We'll go to Maidana, who's falling over himself all the time, and Broner will beat him. You know, and but you're fighting a monster puncher at a higher weight. You're still now Broner's at welter at welterweight, and he's not a real welterweight. You know, so um, the whole thing about me and Broner, we matched up so well because I was not a big puncher at welterweight, and I also was a naturally smaller person. You know? It's crazy. I watched and complained that you won, mm -hmm. and still mm -hmm. picked Broner to beat Madonna with my 
with everything in me. Yeah, well, with my whole soul. Well, because style, <laughs> stylistically, everybody just thought you know, Maradona's gonna fall over himself, and it and was the Josecito like Josecito Lopez fight for me. Um, he was losing every round, oh, and then he just came back and knocked, knocked out Josecito. Yeah, yeah. So I'm timing like, is everything. Yeah, of course. I'm like, of well, course. maybe Broner won't get knocked out because he's gonna just. Yeah. You well, know. Broner does have a good chin. Broner reminds me of a little bit of Camacho, where when he's gonna get knocked out, he'll just kind of fold up, not in fold up, but up, clam up a little bit mm -hmm. and just hold and not throw a lot of punches. Camacho used to do that a lot, you know. He used to know how to get through the rounds and navigate the rounds as a vet, you know. Broner is kind of a has that vet savviness to not get knocked out. That was an unfortunate fight for him because I feel like that was his best performance. For him. For me. <laughs> well, for, for Broner. I mean, because, for, I mean, because for once you fighting lose, McDonough. Once you lose the Maidana fight, for me, all has been lost for the rematch and all has been lost for a, a possible trilogy because you need the title in the mix okay. to make it so big. And mm -hmm. now the title's been lost. Granted, if, if you would have beat Maidana, they were just going to put him in Mayweather anyway. But... The losing the title to Maidana, now even if you fight Broner, there's no title in the mix. A trilogy with a world championship, a major world title. This is the the this was the premier version of the WBA title. At the time, it only became super if you unified it, which it wound up becoming super once Mayweather unified it with his WBC title, took it from Maidana. But at the time we have this, you're dealing with the premier version of the WBA title, not the kind of not the WBA title that Jamonta Davis likes to win, the, the real one. <laughs> you know? The, the so I'm serious, bro. Like everybody's a champion now, you know? Um and that's a good fighter, mind you. Like, don't, not, not a knock on Javanta. It's a knock on the belt. But but um I I I, I was like, oh man, oh, that's it. You know, like you had the highest rated Showtime Championship boxing. You had the highest rated uh in 2013 was me versus Broner, the highest rated show. Wow. You had a built-in drama that still didn't stop after the fight if you really no, kind of didn't. think about it right it so didn't. you could have just carried it right over it was For just, real. i mean the post fight your interview was epic yeah you, know, you know what you know what's it crazy? was a lot of moments you know what's great bro i'll tell you people can think what they want about that fight and then you know they're gonna the conclusions always get you know you can't change people's minds about you know with the girl and whether she was my girl or not listen you can think what you want about that but the thing was when i look back on it i'm like man that was the last fight where like he made it fun again. Broner made it fun for me again. Like it, boxing hadn't been fun in a while. Like I was angry for the Zinchenko fight. You know, uh, the, the Kano win was like this controversy built around it. Boxing hadn't been fun in a while, man. And this, I got this young flashy kid who's so witty and he forces me to step up my wittiness game, you know, like, like, like nobody ever has, you know? And it's like, it became fun, bro. It became like, yo, who can one up each other with the trash talk? It just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it was obviously aggravating because i was dealing with a stalker but it was also like oh man like when i look back on it like yo that was fun it hadn't been fun in a while that was fun no, it, so was it would have been big it would have been too. it would have been so fun to do it again you know what i mean like it would have been because it would have just carried over and now he's the champion and we would have had to do it again and i would have probably got the rematch the, the decision in the rematch because you know they can't rob me twice in a row at least i don't think so <laughs> so so we would have done it for a third time and it would have carried over again i mean who knows man it would have just been it would have just been crazy man it would it might have even spun off into a reality show <laughs> Nah, it was a it was it's an a amazing shame. build up they, they dropped the ball they dropped the ball me and me and Broner, they dropped the ball you know it was an amazing yeah. build up though it's like you say um it, it spilt over and it continued. Yeah. Uh, I was telling Pat when I met Pat, like, no, I got this Paulie Malinaji video. That shit, a anytime he fucking talks, it gets <laughs> hits. And it's and it's because I titled it like Polly verbally slaughters Adrian Bro. It yeah. doesn't stop getting hit. Yeah, like, yeah. Your, yeah. your rant I mean, yo, those press him. conferences were great, bro. Those yeah. press conferences. When I look back, I'm like, yo, he made it fun for me. But that's like, that's why I, I thought it was cool with Broner. Even but people were like, oh, how are you cool with Broner? Because first of all, it wasn't my girl. If it was my girl, we wouldn't be able to be cool, of course. But, but second of all, besides that, he made it fun, bro. Mm -hmm. Nobody made it fun for me anymore. You know, Adrian made it fun for me, bro. You know, and he made, I feel like he made it fun for everybody to watch, too. He did. Because nobody. Adrian was always witty, but nobody could give it to him like that. You know, like when we go back and forth with that witty trash mm -hmm. talking, you know, like it, we, we were just a perfect foil. Would you put him on your Mount Rushmore of trash talkers? Absolutely. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Who, who's, yeah. who's on your on your guys's? Absolutely. Hector Camacho. Camacho. Yeah. Nassim Hamed. Muhammad, sure. Ali, Muhammad Ali. Oh, uh, definitely Muhammad Ali and Floyd then. Yeah. Muhammad Ali, Floyd. Especially Bro. now that you think you hear some of the shit Floyd said. Yeah. It's like, wow. <laughs> like, you, you listen to it now. Like, even 
Small, like hard work, dedication. He's turned that into something. Yeah, but uh, I'll tell you, the Gotti rant. Jesus, yes, you could but, put a but beat I'll, over that. It's some music. I'll, but I'll, but I'll, I'll tell you what. Floyd was trash. But when to me, when you're a trash talker, when you can go back and forth. You know, Floyd was a great fighter, but I don't. I, yeah, I, I never McGregor saw him. McGregor made him. Look I never bad. saw him as the witty as the witty guy. But that's because yeah, we never had talk. anybody to do well, what McGregor well, did. So well, once McGregor someone did it, exactly. that proves what how witty you are. Though. Exactly. Like, you know, I was a trash talker, but nobody elevated me like Broner did. But when Broner elevated me. I, I, I did what I did with the trash mm -hmm. talk, you know, like because it takes on the. Yeah. You can't McGregor, rehearse. It. You can't rehearse that. McGregor killed for you, it called the slap head. Oh, I would have. <laughs> well, I would have. I would have slammed McGregor in the trash Yo, talk. Yo, yeah, so play. much. If we would have done me and McGregor. The trash talk it would have been epic. He, he can't be. Nobody can beat me in trash talk. Remember talking. he brought up uh, uh, Floyd's platform shoes. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> McGregor was killing. Yo, Floyd. no, McGregor's good with the trash he talk. He's another Floyd. witty one. Uh, but as far as boxing, Mount Rushmore of trash talkers. Ali was good. Mm -hmm. Ali was good. You know what's funny about Ali with his trash talk? You ever see Oscar Bonavena uh, press conference? Mm -mm. Uh, Bonavena got under his skin, man. He was like, he, he wouldn't call him by his name. And I don't know. He was like, and Bonavena, you know what? If you really watch this press conference, uh, uh, Muhammad Ali is trying to talk trash, but he, but oh, Bonavena's English is not good enough for it to affect him. Yeah. So Muhammad is trying to talk trash. Like, I've never wanted to knock out somebody so bad. This guy's going, and Bonavena's like going like you like chicken, cheap, 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 cheap. And, like, <laughs> and Ali's getting mad, but Ali can't he can't make him understand what he's saying. Yeah. So Ali's getting irritated because. I'm insulting this guy. And he don't even know what I'm saying, so it's, he's not even affected by it. But I understand what he's saying, so he's getting aggravated. But yo, he made him pay in the fight, though. He stopped him in that 15th round, and he stood right over him. He went, and, he, and he kept standing right over him when he would drop him. You know. We just got a 16 and now Andres Cortez here. He's gonna oh. come in. Okay. Uh, so let's jump okay. in. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap this one up. All Thanks. right. Nice. Well, thank you. No, no, no. So good. Good.